Well, good morning and welcome. We have a great one here for you today. Uh, hopefully you've been with us all week. If not, you can see all the lectures from both this week and the few that I have next week. You can see them all on my self-recruiter channel very, very easily over on YouTube. So today brings us to the end of the week and we have a, had a very momentous week. This has been a week about taking back control in your job search. It started with how you supercharge your job search by having a proper structure of organizing and managing all of the activities that are involved in a real job search. The tragedy I see is that people think sitting on the internet, <laughs> looking at job postings is a job search. And that is not a job search. That's that's tragedy where you're wasting 50% of your time. Uh, go back and see Monday's lecture. It's a great one. Tuesday, we did resume renovation, all the ways to break down really down to the studs and rebuild your career story across the resume to capture the essence and value of your career on a single sheet of paper, not every detail. Polar opposite to that, we covered on Wednesday, which is all about building your career brand with LinkedIn and how to use LinkedIn for your job search. It's really about how to take that single sheet resume, essence and value of your career. And now how do we expand that into a full three-dimensional sales brochure for you with your LinkedIn profile. That's Wednesday. Yesterday was part two to my LinkedIn, which is called career evolution. Once I have a great LinkedIn, now what? It's all about how to build and manage a digital self-marketing campaign for your job search and career on LinkedIn that you can execute in just two minutes per day once you do the homework that I talk about in the lecture. Today, wrapping out the week, we're going to do interview intervention. Most of us need an intervention before our next interview happens. We're going to come back Monday with a very special paradigm shift in job search, marketing yourself directly to the decision maker and go through all the scripts and how that really works. Cap off everything on Tuesday with the final full lecture. We do have a Wednesday session, but final full lecture on Tuesday, which is charting your career transition. If you're looking to do something very different than you've done now, how do we make that jump and how do we handle the story change as we do it? We're going to end out the entire series with a very special Wednesday Ask Self Recruiter live Q&A. So don't hesitate to join in any of the sessions or watch them on LinkedIn Live or YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're joining me. So today, interview intervention. You know, I thought, how, how should I name this? How should I talk about this? And an intervention is exactly what we need to have. We need someone to stop us before we go into our next interview and repeatedly stab ourselves in the foot over and over again. <laughs> so the interview is about influence and your nuance in communications. Uh, you know, how can you convey and interact your, uh, with other people, conveying your personal brand, instilling confidence, building excitement for you as this product? We can't get away from it. We're a product the same as some product is, is on the shelf at the grocery store. You want to be that, 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 that you want to be that store brand product. Labels always just a little bit off coloring on the label, just a little bit off. The taste is always just a little bit off. Oh, price is very good. Price is very good. You want to be that store brand or would you like it? The national brand that commands the attention, the price, everything else. Think about how you're going to position yourself in conversation, which is what today is about. So if we revisit what we talked about on Tuesday and on Wednesday and even yesterday with the marketing campaign, it all centers around understanding your brand, what elements of you that you want other people to think about and really carrying that through with how you speak about yourself. Now, of course, we have to take it across every other piece of our potential information that's out there. So we present a unified story. But in terms of interview, really more than any place else, our success will be determined by how much preparation we put into it. Your interview is a sales meeting. I hope, I hope that's not a surprise to you. Uh, most of us are like, oh, sales meeting. Oh, you know, when I would give in-person lectures, I'd, I'd love to call out to the audience. Oh, who likes salespeople? Who likes salespeople? <laughs> and, and after not a lot of answers, someone would yell out while hiding behind, they'd yell out, I hate salespeople. I'm like, mm. <laughs> but I don't think we really hate salespeople. What we hate are bad salespeople. And especially in the interview process, your interview is to charm and disarm concerns around your candidacy while advancing the perception of what you bring to the table as the ultimate solution for them. It's a sales meeting. If your job was to sell your company's oh, product or service or whatever it is, and you had to go into some other company to go sell your services to them or products to them, 
How would that sales meeting look? How aggressive and commanding would you be? How confident would you be about your offering? And how quick would you be to throw the competitor right under the front tire of the bus? Probably very quick or you wouldn't make a sale. Now we can't be quite that harsh in our interview process, but we have to understand it's still a sales meeting. We just have to use softer skills to make our case because it's a sales meeting. We have to use softer skills to engage them because it's a sales meeting. It's not an interrogation, even though it might feel like one. It's really, it's our job to teach them how to select us. So when they object to us, when they question us, when they accuse us of not having something inside, I go, fantastic, fantastic. Because right away, I understand that they have a question that I can answer just with how I respond to them. And I have to use an agree but disagree technique most of the time. I have to say, oh, I can see how you might think that. That's as close as I'm going to get to agreeing with something I don't like. But the reality is this, and here's why I'll be the most valuable in this role. And here's why I was so excited to speak with you today. Because in addition to a sales process, don't forget, it's the other most dreaded thing in the world. It's a dating process. It's a dating process because the only reason, number one reason, really, not the only reason, but the number one reason you get hired over everybody else assuming you're capable and qualified. I cannot make you capable or qualified, but assuming you're capable or qualified, whether you've held the job or not, it's chemistry above all other things. Number two is confidence in you above chemistry. And that's before the credentialing, the background, who'd you work for? What was the work product? What did you produce? All of that stuff. So let's go in there and be excited when they challenge us so we can overcome those objections and tell a story about why we're valuable. Now, in the process of preparing for your discussion of interview, same challenge we have on the resume, same challenge we have on the LinkedIn profile. People tend to fall in that trap of wanting to be cookie cutter perfect. I'm going to be cookie cutter perfect, and that's going to be the magic. Oh, the magic. I'm perfect. Great. Number three, I'll take number three. I'm going to, I'm going to pay you less. But you don't want less? Number, okay. Number two, number two, number five. I'm taking one of you folks, and I'm paying you less because you're all interchangeable. There's there's the the little bit of the the dynamic that we have to we have to meet the interchangeability and yet we have to somehow step out of line be different be exceptional all coming down to the nuance in our communications if you haven't seen me before john Crant, author career coach and speaker resume and linkedin guru as well so if you are suffering from a poorly told career story which most people are it's not really your fault you're not the expert at telling your story you lived it and most likely you're so emotionally close to the story you can't see the most advantageous way to tell it uh i grew up catholic <laughs> which means i know all about negotiating sin and everything else there's no sin of omission here i can leave out any part of the story that i'd like to leave out as long as every single piece of the story that i bring in is letter true and that is difficult for the average individual because they're so emotionally close to their own story <laughs> um, if you need help with your linkedin or your resume Check out my services on the Self Recruiter website. Everything's under the services tab. And if you need to talk before you know which package is right for you, send me a quick email. We'll set up a time to speak. Some other resources that will help you. Book is a great roadmap over on the Self Recruiter website, over on Amazon. Really help you in all stages of your job search and challenges that you get into and really teaching you how to think out of the box, which is what we're really trying to get to. Another resource over my self recruiter website, halfway down the page, there's a very special version of my LinkedIn profile where you can see me and the slides large, adjust it any way you'd like. Really, you can use that as a start and stop tutorial while you build a better and better LinkedIn profile. Of course, you can click through on my LinkedIn, get some uh, different articles that will help you in various aspects. Well, let's get into today. Self recruiter, it's the umbrella for the entire series. It's really the concept that will help you manage your career in a much better way. And it's about expanding your network in a very different way, which is really the proper use of LinkedIn and keeping one eye on the toughest competitor imaginable. Cause it's not really as easy as, oh, just see the job, go after the job, I'll get the job. Maybe I'll get the interview, absolutely, it's great. And then what happens? Well, it doesn't tend to really be that easy. There's all those other people doing that same thing that you're doing, hitting that darn button. Now, to be clear, if you've listened all week, you've probably heard by now, I am not a fan of applying online for a job. In fact, when my clients go, oh, I have a job I want to go after, I'm like, great, great, don't apply for it. Well, why, why? Don't apply for it. What? <laughs> Does this even make sense? Um, when you apply for it, where's it going? 
to the HR department in almost all cases. Now, would you like to work for the HR department? That's great. That's your decision maker. You're headed the right direction. For the rest of us, you're really allowing yourself to be ruled out of the job by someone who really doesn't have your background, who is also juggling the same evaluation across 10 open jobs at the same time, and they don't have your background. So it's a quick cursory look, and I don't really understand you. Are you going to plan your your career future like that? Well, you might as well stop at the bodega to buy a lottery ticket to plan your financial future that way. But if you got yourself, found the courage to get to the decision maker, oh, I know it takes a little bit of extra, not that much extra, a little bit of extra. It's in the lectures all week. Get to that decision maker, 90 second conversation. They know exactly why you're right for this role or not. So think about all that in the process. But uh, lots earlier in the week that will help you get past this unhappiness. In terms of interview, the unhappiness really comes from us falling in the trap of, of usual customer expect it and not thinking out of the box in unusual, unconventional ways. Whatever rules don't work for you, just change them. 20 questions, 20 answers. Well, that's not going to work very well. So yes, I'm going to get the 20 questions, but I'm going to begin to answer back conversationally, draw them in. So we're not just question, answer, question, answer. I have to build a relationship. They have to want to hire me. They have to want me as part of their team. They would have to desire this product. Now, here's a quick look at most of the competitors out there. Troubles me to say this, but mediocre of only moderate quality, not very good, ordinary, average, uninspired, undistinguished, indifferent, on and on and on, no great shakes, not up to much, and Bush League. When I present that in person, people were like, wow, not, not very uplifting, John. <laughs> we were already feeling depressed uh, with our situation. I'm like, okay, but would you like to feel better? There's a silver lining here if we can just get past the emotional piece. Uh, this portends some awful things for our future. <laughs> we need to change this trajectory, but I can't fix that. That's too big of a ship to turn. But if you understand this, what do you have to be? Little tiny bit better than mediocre and you're ahead of most people already. All you actually have to do is put a little heart and soul into whatever your function is. And you'll naturally be the top one, two, three percent rise right to the top like that cream. So don't be mediocre and put a little passion in it. By the way, passion does not require payment. If you're unemployed and feeling like, down in the doldrums now. I, I get it. I get it. But but passion for your field, passion for what you do doesn't require payment. I am clearly not being paid today and I still have lots of passion for it. So really apply your gusto and your expertise and fall in love again with your own career story. Let the baggage that we all have fall to the wayside and let's put on those rose-colored glasses and get ready for the interview. So as we get ready, we have to go back and assemble our greatest collection of stories ever. Just because we say stories, they have to be absolutely true. So let's be, <laughs> be, be ready about that. But we have to get these stories in a way that is ready to be in shape and be shared with others. How can I tell this story where I somehow put them in my shoes, looking out of my eyes, having the experience? It was a very different outcome. So as you prepare for your interview and prepare which stories will I tell when they want to know about this skill or how do I manage people or tell me about my project management, whatever it might be they might ask you about. We have to prepare for in person. Is this telephone? Is this video, Zoom, meet? All those things are on the table. Well, first thing to remember is don't answer questions, even though that sounds like I'm going to be adversarial. Well, I'm going to answer their questions, but I'm going to answer them in a way that draws them closer to me rather than maintains the wall. Maintaining the wall will not get you hired. I'm here to persuade. So I'm using the device of the Q&A really to position and sell myself. That also means you need to learn to answer like a good politician. I don't even know if there is such a thing as a good politician, but maybe, maybe a politician that's good at politicking, which doesn't make them a good politician, may make them a bad politician. But Tim Cook is a great example. Tim Cook is running Apple right now. A few springs ago, he was giving a talk to a college audience. This was not a commencement address, but to a college class. Uh, everybody had their their little devices and did, 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 did. So yeah, you can pull the video on this, but he's giving a talk and someone asked him a very inappropriate question in front of everybody. And they're like, when is it okay not to listen to our professors? <laughs> well, a good politician or a 
politician that's good at politicking understands when not to answer the question asked and when to rephrase it. And Tim, without even a missed step in breath, said, you know what I think you're asking? <laughs> Love that technique. You know what I think you're really asking me is when is it okay to uh, uh, follow the rules? And, 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 or when should I follow the rules? And, and I mean, I, I think you should rarely be following the rules. I think you should be writing the rules or you're never going to get to what you're dreaming about. And uh, that may or may not have been a popular answer to have the professor here, but, but boy, that's a perfect rephrasing. So understand you sometimes ask the question you wished you were asked and choose just not to even hear the question you were asked. Be careful because, you know, that can paint you as evasive. So you have to be very, very skilled in how you practice that. Know yourself. You're there to sell yourself. So if you don't know how good you are, if you don't believe it more than the next five or six candidates believe their story, you're not going to get hired. So why are you more valuable? Think about that. Now, the secret you may not like is it really is down to chemistry and confidence. There's no, no two ways about that. I wouldn't consider anybody I didn't consider capable or qualified. They don't have to have held this job before. But I do have to see them as capable or qualified, or I would never even speak with them. So that's not actually a criteria for hiring, even though it seems like it. I wouldn't let anybody into the room, essentially, that didn't meet that bare, bare minimum. It comes down to the chemistry and confidence. I, I, I have a team that exists. You may be the absolute best, but, you know, number two over here, oh, they're a perfect chemistry fit for my team. And that is the part I can't invent. I would have loved to have hired you, but I'm going to take this one over here and you're number two now, even though you're number one. You came in number two. I bet you felt like number two and because you, you forgot you're a winner. <laughs> if you come in one, two or three, you're already a winner. They just didn't select you. You have to think about the engagement piece, which is a lot closer to this engagement piece. What did we miss? Where could I have made better connective uh, uh, bonds with the team? Maybe I didn't evaluate how my chemistry worked with the team. Well, I grab a little tissue here. Sorry for that. Um, you know, all those things are things I have to be thinking about. So as I prepare the different parts of my background to talk about, um, yes, I have to be capable and qualified. But if I if I'm seen as trying to prove that too intently, boy, that really undermines confidence in me. Confidence and chemistry are the two reasons they hire you. So. Let's balance our story and don't be too needy in the amount of pat on the back credit that you get. Um, there's a power in softly letting some trinkets of deliverables come out without needing to go, look what I did. <laughs> I was to the rescue again. We have to think about all that kind of overhype that works against us. Now, why are we interesting and what makes us tick? Probably the reasons you're going to be hired could have something to do with what you do professionally. Could have nothing to do with what you do professionally. Uh, the, here's a little bit of a paradigm shift, a fundamental shift to change a metamorphosis in, in how we approach things. But I want to know those things because I want to get you. You know, my, my talked about this during the week, my Instagram is, is very important to the overall strategy of what I present. And yet it's so important, by the way, it's a drop down menu on my website, my self-recruiter website. One of the drop downs is Instagram. That's usually an indicator that somehow this person thinks that's important. And yet you go there and there's absolutely nothing about what I do professionally. What is it? It's, it's me hiking up the Hudson Valley or, or, or climbing Half Dome out in Yosemite or, or almost dying in the desert two and a half years ago um, on a hike at 108 degrees, taking a wrong turn up on the plateau, which added two more miles in the sun, heart rate out of control for the last hour. Didn't think I was going to make it back. Um, Everything on my Instagram is about taking on challenge, which also affects everything that I do here. So uh, uh, they're all related. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> um, we have to think about that. In terms of how you're going to tell your story, if you've done the work earlier in the week to reinvent the resume, reinvent the LinkedIn profile, even yesterday's work to think about how you're going to showcase certain skills through what you share, all of that is content potentially for your discussion, which you're going to filter through a singular question. Why is it going to be the best business decision they'll make today if they choose to hire me? And the things out of your story background that rise to that level, not the ones, oh, I love to tell this, love to tell that. That's great, but put it up on the shelf and, and let's pull the ones that are important to the front. Best business decision ones. Let's talk about those things that will help not only convey that absolutely I'm interchangeable, but I'm so much more. I have better skills. This all comes out of your nuance, your 
ability to use your soft skills. That's the emotional intelligence quotient. All those things that you see up here that I don't really have to read for you, but look at those last two on the list, friendliness and optimism. <laughs> I'm so optimistic, Sagittarius, by the way. I'm so optimistic the sun will come up tomorrow, even if it's a nuclear holocaust. I, I sure hope it's not, sure hope it's not. But that sun's coming up tomorrow. You have to take this energy with you. Your job is to persuade them. Their life gets easier if they hire you. Their life gets better if they hire you. It's all about influence. So make sure you keep enough of that conversation about them. What's going on with your team? What would you like to see different? You know, as I project yourself, as I step into this role, now they visualize me stepping into the role. As I step into this role, Jack, Jim, Jill, you know, uh, one thing I'd like to ask you, of course, I've done all my preparation. Can't let you think you didn't prepare. You know, I've read through the job description. I've looked at competitors. I've done some analysis, but I'd really like to hear from your perspective, your opinion. Stroke that ego. You know, as I step into the role, what do you see as most critical to get control of in, say, the first 30 to 60 days? Stay away from 90 days. That triggers something totally different in the brain. 30 to 60 days, they'll automatically regurgitate to you what's on fire, what's about to derail, what needs handling immediately. Those are all the things they would like the person to have. If you've got background in those, oh my gosh, let's, let's go ahead and talk about it. Well, let's back up a little bit and talk about preparing for the interview itself. Don't forget there's video interview techniques coming up toward the end. But as we prepare for the interview itself, um, I have to warm up my audience. And to warm up my audience, I have to use LinkedIn. So if I have a, let's say I have an interview on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Fantastic. It's Friday. I have time. Love it. So not only can I prepare the answers to my questions and everything else over the weekend and rehearse. <gasps> Is that a dirty word? Rehearse? It's called preparation. You wouldn't rehearse before an important sales meeting where you had to sell the potentially number one client for your company. Of course you would. <laughs> Same thing here. Why wouldn't we do that here? So what we'd like to do first off is begin to warm up that audience, especially as they're going into the weekend where they might even look at our materials just a little bit more than the busy weekday. And so first thing I'm going to do is open and ask everybody to connect. If I'm going to meet with four or five or six people, I open every single one of them. If I haven't done it previously as part of my whole process, I will have opened their profiles, triggers a marketing event as having looked at them. I'm going to ask them to connect because it's a sales process. I'm going to remind them that they're about to meet me in this process. I'm looking forward to meeting you on Tuesday. And of course, I'd love to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. Well, who's this guy I'm meeting? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice background. And now they're reading about my background Friday ahead of Tuesday, thinking about me just from this one interchange, just the very first interchange. Hopefully what it does is it gets them to click through and jump over into my LinkedIn profile, which is a selling tool to nudge them forward, keeps them from thinking about other competitors they're going to think about because they're thinking about me. Small little changes, change perception, be persuasive. That's our job. Now, let's break it down into a real interview plan, give you the real details. Every one of these areas, I'm going to drill down deep next. So don't be surprised. We'll go a little fast here. We're going to build the agenda. If this was a sales meeting and you had to go sell your company's product or service, you'd certainly put an agenda together before you try to go sell to a customer. Why don't we put an agenda together before the interview where you have to go sell yourself to this new company and this new contact? <laughs> Do a needs analysis, another sales thing we have to talk about. Find out what their real need is before you answer too many questions. Don't just go on your assumption of what that darn job posting says, because half the time it doesn't really include the critical things they'd like to solve because they're too embarrassed to write those in the job posting. You need to discover those. Are your work life stories going to be ready? Well, we started talking about that. If there's no buy sign, if they're not ready to move forward, no matter how nice it is, oh, I loved our conversation, John. Oh, sounds pretty good. But we have a few more people to see. It'll probably be four or six weeks before we have an answer. It's like, oh, if there's no buy sign, I have to overcome those objections. I have to close them. It's another scary sales term. So they're thinking of me as the very best of the best. Get the job, get the interview. Let's drill down to each one of these areas. Let's take the agenda itself. If I'm going to build the agenda, well, who am I, who am I meeting with? Do I have all the names? Well, yeah, well, I mean, they, sent, they sent me two names. Do you have all the names? Well, they sent me two. It doesn't sound like you have all the names. It sounds like they sent you two names. So 
why don't you email them back? But I just emailed them this morning. Email them again. It's worth it. Uh, Jack, uh, I wanted to check back in. I'm so looking forward to our conversation on Tuesday. In addition to yourself and, and, and Jim, is there anybody else I'm likely, very important word, to meet with so I can fully prepare for the meeting? And they will tell you. If you forget to include that word likely, then you go, oh, I'm not sure. And you didn't get far because you didn't consider how you'd be stopped. But if you include likely, they're going to go, I'm not really sure, but probably, well, well, Janet will certainly be there and probably maybe one or two of your peers. Okay. I can look up Janet on LinkedIn and figure out who that is. I can look on LinkedIn and see who my peers are. Oh, there's six peers. I'm going to meet with one or two of these people. I have to plan on building chemistry with all six because I don't know which of the one or two I'm going to meet with or it could even be more or the others could be listening in on a recorded version of my interview later on. So I have to think about all of these things. So how am I going to build chemistry with each one of these? Which person needs to hear which career story that would make them jump out of the chair and I get their vote? I have to get each person's vote. And it isn't necessarily the same conversation or story I have to have with each to get their vote. You have to be very perceptive. What will make them jump out of their chair? What else do they need to hear? Needs analysis, scary sales term. It really just simply means don't answer too many questions before you confirm out of their own lips what the actual need is. And here again, the trap is you can't let them think you didn't do the homework. So it's like, you know, gosh, maybe they even ask you a question first. I don't want you to answer any question before you do this. But maybe they say, oh, John, tell me about yourself. <gasps> I wanted to ask that question for a little bit. I'd love to. And I use agree but disagree technique. I'd love to before I do. There's the disagree. Um, I'd like to make sure my answers are as focused and as valuable for you as possible about them because it's a date. <laughs> um, of course, I've done my homework. I've read the job description. I've looked at your competitors. I've looked at the industry, done some analysis, but I'd love to hear from your perspective, your opinion. As I step into this role, you know, what are the most important or critical items to get control of in, say, the first 30 or 60 days? And then... If you've got background in that, you've got the right answer. You know how to refocus what you had decided in advance to do here. So out of all that discussion, uh, if they don't, if, if, it, if they're not forthright with, with telling you things, then you can poke around. Well, what pain points do you have? What, what, what would you like to change? What would you like to solve? What would you like to be different? What have you not seen? Incredibly important question. So simple. Well, what we haven't seen is someone with this, this, and this. Ding, 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 ding. Let's just. <laughs> My gosh, do you have those three items? Go right to those three items. Oh, that's interesting, Jack, because actually I have a background in all three areas. We should talk about it because that's exactly why they haven't hired someone else. You have to listen for the indications that are there. Selecting our work life stories. Well, of course, we started earlier in today's session talking about this. So. Of all of your career stories, there's a lot of things you love to tell. Oh, I love to tell that story. If it's appropriate, if it moves the needle forward, absolutely. If not, put it up on the shelf. You can go visit that on your own time. So which stories illustrate a certain skill or a value or an interest? You have to think about what you're going to, to convey and to which person, which audience, because you may have several audiences. Each of those people, it's their job to object to you. Well, you don't have background in this. We don't, you've never done this role before. You know, I haven't. Chemistry and confidence. I can't let that shake my confidence. What time you've never worked in nonprofit before? You know, I haven't. <laughs> but but I'm sure you'll meet a lot of other candidates. Everybody else is a candidate with a little. Da -da -da -da. You know, I'm an individual that brings something, always an individual, brings something very different to the table. It's actually why I'll be most successful in this role and pitch what you think it is. Last year, you haven't worked since last year. You know what they could object to you about. Think about how you're going to overcome each one of those with a little bit of an agree but disagree technique. Then practice it until it's smooth. Do it out loud and record it. Play it back. You'll get better and better. If there's no buy sign. Now, you can't kid yourself. The only buy signs are, I'd love to bring you back next week to meet so-and-so. Great. Actual indication that you're going to be involved in the next interview. They don't actually have to schedule it, but they've already told you, yes, I'm going to bring you back to meet Jack, Jim, Jill. 
Fantastic. That's a buy sign. The only other buy sign is moving toward offer. You know, Jack, Jim, or Jill, I'd love to get your, your references. I would like to move toward offer stage. Great indication. No matter how nice it sounds, if it's not that, oh my gosh, John, what an amazing discussion we've had. You'd have a wealth of background that could be so valuable to us. <gasps> sounds so good so far. And then they go, but, but, you know, you, you're really just one of the first people we've seen. We have another three or four that we have to see. We're probably going to be four or six weeks before we have an answer. Really? First thing I go is, wow, really? After meeting with me today, you still need to meet with others? <laughs> I can pull that off. Be careful with your humor. You may not be able to pull that off. But that's part of how I overcome their objections. And I want to shake them a little bit mentally to go, you know, when you've found the perfect unicorn, why do you have to wait? to kiss some of those donkeys or meet some of those donkeys that are out there. Um, I'm probably not going to go to that analogy, but that's the energy I'm probably going to take to it. Um, yes, I want them to think about that. Why should we miss losing John? We can just hire him now. Closing questions. Now, closing questions. This is really, I'm going to, this is a tool I'm going to deploy when essentially I didn't get the job or they're not going to move me forward yet. Now, it doesn't mean I lost yet, but I didn't win yet. So if I didn't win and they're not telling me we're heading toward offer, if they're not telling me we're heading toward another interview, uh, for sure, then I'm going to use a closing question, which will help them visualize the whole hiring process as a two-dimensional race. And they're going to visualize where on that race they see me. And that's going to cause them to think about what's wrong with me. I get it. I get it. No one wants to cause them to think what's wrong with you, except you didn't win. Did you miss that part? Call you back in four to six weeks. You'll hear from us. Never hear from us again type thing. You didn't win. So why not take a little measured risk right now and get them to tell you what's wrong so you can overcome it right now. So closing questions are, are, are pretty simple. It could be as simple as, you know, Jack, what have you, what have you not heard? What have we not discussed? A little positive, negative on the energy because you never know how their brains are wired. That would help you in your decision process for this role. Now that's pretty good. I like it. But if you've, Seen me before, if you've, you've heard me before, you know that's not quite enough for me. <laughs> that's very good and very effective. I'd like it even a little bit more. You know, Jack, what have you not heard or, or what have we not discussed that would help you in your selection of me as the very best individual for this role? And then don't blink and look at them. It doesn't matter if it hurts. Eventually, you can look away and blink. <laughs> um, it's very, very powerful. It's not about getting them to conclude, oh my gosh, we should hire you right now, John. Well, I'd love that. But it's really about getting that seed to rattle around in their head right now so that once we leave this meeting, it's still rattling around. Once they go meet that next candidate that's in line, it's still rattling around thinking about John or you. So these are very, very important now. Let's recap on what preparing for an interview really is. We have to build an actual agenda. We have to do it full needs analysis so we don't hit the wrong target with our stories. But I like to say it this way. That's great if you'd not like to be hired for these roles, but let's go hit this target. Uh, select your work life story so you have that ready. Understand how to overcome objections if there's no buy sign. Close them to get them to think about why you're the very best one and really either get that job or get that next interview. Let's run through my interview checklist. This is another way to think about all the things we just talked about. Complete your research on the job, the company, and more. Gather up as much as you can learn about company culture. But you know what? You may not even really discover that until you're really working there. Do a needs analysis early in the meetings before you answer too many questions. Won't go too far into that as we've talked about it. Oh, behave. <laughs> your body language is speaking volumes. I hope you are controlling it. Let's watch our body language. There's no point at which we're relaxed, even if in the middle of the interview, they suddenly have to take a phone call and throw their feet up on their desk. It doesn't matter. You're still in the interview. I might mouth, would you like me to step out? And they're like, I had that happen right during an interview. And I got to watch his feet right at me the whole time as he's barking on the phone. I'm like, oh, how lovely. I'll just hold my posture and composure as I don't react to what I'm hearing. <laughs> Dress like you are a success. You know, usually I'm, I'm out doing cardio early. I'm, I'm in, in tights, five finger shoes, those kinds of things. If I show up here to give this lecture, I don't think you're going to listen to me. So it's really important that you look like the product, even if we might have become a little bit more work from home, a little more relaxed. This is your chance to look like a million bucks. Your competitor 
shows up to an interview process looking better than you are, your competitor is ahead of you. Don't let the way you present your dress rule you out. Are you listening? Going to give you so many things to, to think about. You're going to forget to actually listen. You have to actively listen and not only hear the words that are said, you certainly have to hear all the words between what is said. And, the, and sometimes it's the opposite of what they're actually saying. Hear the reality. You're there to sell yourself. Yes, you're there to evaluate, but don't let them see you evaluating. You're there to sell yourself so that if you get to the interview, end of the process, and you like them, you want them to have liked you also, which means they have to see that you desire them. It's a date. Would you like more money? Gosh, let's teach you how to get more money. By the way, there's nothing wrong with wanting more money. I mean, I'd like more money too. Um, here's how you get more money, and nobody likes this. Don't talk about money. But, 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 but my clients will go, but, but when do I? But, but. Don't talk about money. <laughs> if you'd like the very best offer possible, it is your mission in life to make sure the subject of money never comes up if possible. So I have my little feelers out. I even get a sense that two questions from now, you're going to ask me about money. I have to inject such a compelling question that's distracting over here that you totally forget to come back to money. This is very, very possible, very, very easily. I have a client that's English as second language that I've helped over the last 10, 12 years. And they have moved from one absolutely stunning job to the next absolutely stunning job, an employer. Absolutely. Till now you pick up your resume and people go, oh, they all hired you? Oh, yes. Go after better and better and better brands that will eventually happen to you. <clears throat> but along the way, there was one interview process this person went through. It was for a very large institution in town, very bureaucratic back end to the institution. So we certainly did not apply online. We went right to the decision maker, bypassing HR. And we went through, oh, three, three, three one-on-one -on -one interviews. Then we did a six panel interview. Then we're like, uh, hey, can you come up and have an offsite coffee? You know, that's really another interview. And then, and then we think we're getting the call and they're like, we're having an open house on Saturday. Why don't you come work the open house? I'm like, like all day Saturday? Oh, I'd love to, <laughs> or you're not gonna get the job. And we did. And then finally we get the call and, and the manager is beside themselves going, you're not in the system. You're not in the system. We don't know how much money you're making. <laughs> Masterful. We already understood that if they, if they knew how much my client was making, there would never have been an interview. So they had to fall in love with my client first. And then when they heard how much my client was making, this is what they heard on the phone. Ah. Uh. Well, I guess we're going to have to look at the top of the next range. Mm, I like the sound of that for where we're going. And we squeezed out like another $2,642.41. I do not know how they get down to the penny in those organizations, but I'm pretty confident we squeezed out as much as we could. You get the very best offer by not talking about money. But in practicing and in the many times you try, you will, will occasionally fail. And maybe you will fail right away when the first thing they say is, what are you looking for in compensation? They asked me. <laughs> um, so how you get around that, which you should avoid happening in the first place if possible, if you're really skilled. But when it does happen to you and you get cornered, you simply, it's like, it's like you just had an epiphany in the moment where you have not actually thought about that. And you go, oh, uh, you know, Jack, Jim or Jill, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very open. I mean, to me, and then we reframe, to me, what it's about is really finding that right home for my career. Ooh. Ooh. That again, magical phrase, home for my career. I hope you write that stuff down. Um, you know, I'm. It, it's why I'm so excited. And then back to them like a date. It's why I'm so excited about our conversation today. Ooh, that little bit of a deflection will cut off a third of the people that will not have the stone somehow, won't have the bravery somehow to ask you again <laughs> what you're looking for financially. Um, just knowing negotiations and that kind of thing and, and naming salary, anybody that says the number first loses. So I certainly will never say the number first myself. I will walk out the door and lose this opportunity before I'll ever tell them how little to pay me because that's the question. If they simply said, how little can I pay you, John? I think you'd be a little more indignant and resistant to divulging that information. So um, if they come back around a second time, try to be more helpful, they might even try to like roll up their sleeves and just... I won't hold you to it. I just need a ballpark. I just need to have an idea. I just need to know we're heading the right direction. Liar, liar, pants on fire. They certainly are not there. They're going to use that information against you. So even in that case, I'm going to go, 
gosh, I'm not really sure what to tell you. Uh, you know, you certainly know how these rules are compensated. What I would say is make me a fair offer. Pause. <laughs> because if you simply say make me a fair offer, they have one concept of what that is, which is very different from your concept. You create a gap, a void, something that has to be solved. So when I say fair offer, I absolutely have to define it. And I'm simply going to say, you know, based, of course, on the responsibilities for that role and, and, and those unique things that I bring to the table. A little bit of a pregnant pause in between those, all three of them. And if they try to step in and begin to speak, I'm going to have to verbally step on them, even though we don't like that, because I must get that definition implanted in their head. And at the end, I'm simply going to recap, just make me a fair offer. I'm sure it'll be fine. If they make you a fair offer, I am sure it'll be fine. I'm also very, very sure they're not going to make you a fair offer because almost every organization I've ever seen lowballs you. Oh, mm -hmm. Offer them that. We'll see what happens. We can always raise it. Seems to be that light, lightly taken on the back end from all the conversations I've seen. So that's a few of the secrets about how you get to money. Time to get it right. Two timing things to think about. If this is an in-person interview, get into the area 30 minutes in advance. Not in the office, not in the lobby, but get to a coffee shop, get to a park bench, something. Go through your notes. Make sure you're, you're properly uh, uh, calorie up. Make sure your caffeination is at the right level. All those things that have to be balanced. G review all of your notes. Close your notebook 10 minutes ahead of time. And allow yourself just to be centered and present and trust that all the homework you've done, all the preparation you've done, all the rehearsal you've done will be available to you in the moment. And then allow yourself enough time to get through the building security and the lobby security. So we arrive in the office lobby, wherever floor that is, five to 15 minutes before your scheduled time. If you've got an 11 o'clock interview and you show up at 1035, that is not a good thing for you. John, your, your 11 o'clock is here. Oh, my day is already out of control. Now I got to come out there and say hello to you. I can't leave you sitting out there 25 minutes. And I have to put a happy face on and go, oh, hi. I'll see you right at 11, a little busy this morning, but I can't wait for a discussion. Oh, you're already messing up my day. Think about being the release of all their problems, removing all the obstacles, uh, being just in time. Next step opportunity. You are there to be excited about them. You're there to ask for the job. I'm, I'm so excited. What's our next step? That's as simple as asking for the job. It's not a desperation ask. Now, the real homework, of course, is to sit down and now prepare the answers to the questions you might be asked. You have to write those out in story form in a way that you might talk to your dear oldest best friend you haven't seen in five years. So it's a very warm, congenial talk. Make a list of questions if you were the hiring manager. That's your area. Add these three self recruiter questions to it. These will help you make sure you have great question answers for all the rest as well. Tell me why I should hire you over all others that I see. Now, you're not likely to be asked this, but you could. It's kind of throwing down the gauntlet question. Uh, I would sure hope you have your value packaged tightly in a sentence or two, no longer, for exactly why. Also, remove out the hopeful or probable language out of your discussion because that introduces doubt, reduces confidence. Next question, tell me why my work life will get easier or better if I hire you. Definitely not likely to ask you it in this form, but elements of this answer better be mixed into my other answers because if I make their life easier or better, they will absolutely hire me very, very quickly. Um, last one, of course, you really know, tell me why it's going to be the best business decision I make today if they choose, if I choose to hire you. Again, they're not likely to ask you this question in this form, but elements of this answer have to be mixed into all your other answers or you're not going to get hired. Practice makes perfect. Get with a coach, get with a friend. Practice until you are blue in the face and you can do it off the cuff. Follow up in the interview process. <sighs> thank you notes. How is it that we don't understand that thank you notes are a game changer? Almost no one sends a thank you notes and sends a thank you note. And almost everybody else lies about sending a thank you note, which I can tell you from just doing a little bit of survey in my in-person audiences, I'll say, who sends thank you notes? Who sends thank you notes? And a very large number of people will claim to have sent thank you notes. But having been on the other side of it, I can tell you almost no one sends a thank you note. It's a stunner. Would you like to be a standout? Simply send a thank you note. The guidelines are this simple. Within two or three hours for maximum effectiveness, you could have written that thank you note 
primarily before you ever walked out the door for the interview. You could have saved it as a draft. It could be ready to go with a little bit of modification. There's no extra thought process to delay this. This is sales, sales, sales. Like to be a standout? Use your thank you notes to, to do some other things as well. Now, key to being effective here on thank you notes is self-diagnosis. So as you walk out of that meeting, I'm not going home. I'm going to go to the nearest park bench or coffee shop or wherever it is. I'm going to do a debrief with myself. I'm going to let it all pour out onto the notebook, capture every tangential thought I'm having. There's a reason you're having those tangential thoughts. Even though they're like, why am I thinking that? Capture it now before you lose it. And that means really debriefing is, is like you think interviews are. <laughs> Grilling, cross-examine, interrogation, except it's a self one. So, so that includes the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> that includes thinking about, um, I have to think about all those things that went well, what didn't go well, what would I like to change? Oh, what did I avoid talking about? Oh my goodness, I have so many things that I have to fix here. Um, this is so we know what to repeat that worked well, where was there opportunity to do something different? And, and last question in debriefing we're going to ask ourselves is the most important question. Want to take a look at it? If they don't move us forward, if they don't hire me, what's the reason going to be? This one does not require a thought. This one, we're like a funny bone. We're just looking for hit the nerve and reaction. You're training your gut on how to think about things went. And right away, your gut will tell you what went wrong. Why aren't they going to move me forward? Because <gasps> I'm weak in area A. Okay, well, is area A important to this job? Yes. You have background in area A? Well, I've only worked on two projects. So did you talk about area A? No, I avoided talking about area A because I was afraid. <laughs> And yet now you see what you've done to yourself. Okay. <laughs> On the debrief, we can then go in and thank them. By the way, please do not thank people for their time. You have to be equal to every other human being you speak with. So do not thank them for their time. Thank them for something else that's meaningful. Thank them for their, their insights, their discussions, the whatever else they might have shared. Excuse the tissue one more last time. And then after you do that, segue over to whatever you'd like to correct. You know, we didn't get a lot of opportunity to discuss area A, where I've worked on projects such as this or such as that. If you'd like to discuss those, reach out at any time. Here's myself. I didn't have to confess they were the only two projects. Yes, it seems like there must be more. I never claimed there were more. This is absolutely letter true. This technique saved one of my own promotions very early in my career. I was running the number one department. Out of 121 stores, I had the number one department in the number four store in the country, very big store. And as my store manager, general manager, went up to be country manager of Canada, I thought, oh, well, John should just rise to the throne to be the general manager as I'm the number one department manager. And <clears throat> went in for interview. This is before all my recruiting time. Went in for interview and all of that and, and did pretty well, pretty good with conversation. But I didn't have any of this recruiting training or background. And, and uh, I get back to my, my store and I call my little spy in headquarters, always good to have a spy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I think it went well. No, 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 they're in there arguing about you right now, something about your vision for the store. I'm like, oh, how could I have failed to communicate my vision for the store? <laughs> Such a basic, basic thing. And so I thank them for the great discussion, the insights they shared, everything else. And, and I said, by the way, we didn't get a lot of opportunity to talk about my vision for the store. If you'd like to talk about that, reach out on my cell phone anytime. Oh my gosh, I'm bullet pointing it out of what I'm going to do. They're going to call me in a minute. Never, never, never called me. Got the job. He has a vision. He has a vision. Well, he can't do anything anyway. It doesn't really matter. He has a vision. I'm excited. Leave them thinking. I'm excited. What's our next step? All things being equal, just don't forget it's about chemistry. And you have to think about all the ways to build chemistry, engaging other people, making it about them, making their work life easier. So that is really the, the key to the interview process. It is selling you through a real and genuine presentation process, but it has to, has to work for them. Let's jump over to the video side. We can give you lots of tips on video interviewing. Now, video interviewing today has become pretty standard. A couple of years ago, not so much. So in general, interviews in, across the board could be scheduled, unscheduled, in person, over the phone. We have to think about all those different aspects and the different opportunities each one might present us. And plus in the, in the COVID era, you know, everything really has moved toward online. And there's a benefit to that because now we're getting very, very used to that. So I wanna, before I show you 
what I think your setup should look like. I'd like to just show you a few things I pulled off of Pinterest. Some people were, were grabbing some Zoom conferences off of Pinterest. I'm like, oh, I love to look at that stuff too. Let's take a closer look. So remembering it's chemistry and confidence that win the day, this would not be a great way to show up to your, your interview. I don't see chemistry. I don't see confidence. I'm not even sure this person realizes they're in an interview and you know they're not interviewing to work at a baseball team <clears throat> or in a sports league, so that doesn't really work. Uh, chemistry and confidence win the day. Do I see it? Do I see it? I, I don't really see it. I don't see chemistry. I certainly don't see confidence. I see this person huddled down like, like a small little field animal. <laughs> All I really see is that bright window out behind them. Um, can't really see too much of anything when all I can see is the background. Chemistry and confidence win the race. Do I see it? Do I see it? Uh, I don't really see either. I expect this person thinks they have the confidence, um, but I don't really need to see the beams on your ceiling. And I certainly don't need to see up your nose. <laughs> so we have to think about angle is very, very important. If you haven't already figured it out, looking at where I'm Standing. Yes, I'm standing. This is an entire hour of standing and presenting because it's important. <laughs> Isn't your interview important as well? Next one we're looking at chemistry and confidence win the race. Uh, chemistry, I don't really feel it. You know, I, I, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give the vote on the confidence. I'll give the vote on the confidence until I take it right back. Because you know what? Having this, this, this headphone and, and gamer mic, um, and 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 even that distract image across your background really tells me that I suspect you actually don't have confidence. You're using other things to convey confidence. Chemistry and confidence win the race. You know what? I'll give them the chemistry. I'll give them the confidence. Problem is the framing here. I like the overall framing, but then we have this giant picture just behind his head and constantly getting upstaged as I'm trying to see what that picture is. We need them looking at you. Chemistry and confidence win the day. Do we see it? Do we see it? You know what? I'll give them the vote on both. I like it. I like the framing. I like everything I see here, except, of course, for all those little pictures on a curved wall, creating reflection. And again, it causes me to really want to zoom in, no pun intended, to see what is in these photos. You're getting upstaged again because we didn't think about it. Chemistry and confidence win the race. Do we see it? I actually see them both here. But I don't think the Princess Leia headphone buns really do much for you. Oh, but I like to listen on headphones. I get it. I like to listen on headphones too. Do you see headphones on John today? No, <laughs> because that doesn't give the right presentation. So even though it might give you better sound and you can hear better, don't wear giant headphones. It works against you. Chemistry and confidence win the race. Do we see it here? Do we see it here? I do see the chemistry. I do see the confidence. Let me comment on that picture. Obviously, this is a stock photo. We can spot a stock photo pretty quickly all the time. But you know what? They did a clever selection of the stock photo that gave them depth without distraction. They're well lit, so they're very three-dimensional themselves. This person does quite well, but I wouldn't be wearing those medium headphones either because I'm still thinking about your headphones versus how wonderful you are. Chemistry and confidence win the race. Do we see it here? Do we see it here? I do see it here. And actually, this is the best out of all of them. Does it accomplish everything I'd like? No. I still see those little wired headphones. I get it. I get it. You like them. And they're probably the best choice if I had to have them. But again, we're a little too up camera. The framing is nice, but not quite fully lit the way we might like on the one side. So those are all. But if all things were equal, which they never are, this would be the winner. Let's go over and show you my exact setup. This is where I'm standing right now. Remember, your video can, your, your interview can be across multiple platforms. You're going to have to get technologically uh, ready for each of them. Well, first, let me show you my other half's uh, remote work setup. Yeah, as we've all had to adjust, here is the one table placed up against the front window in the main room. And uh, their eyes are not sensitive to light, and they like to stare right at that bright window. And doesn't that make an intense, nice, bright uh, presentation on camera? <clears throat> and that's a good start. You got to have great light, even if it's natural light. But there may be times when you need to adjust the light or the coloring of the light or your skin doesn't look right. Most of these color rings that exist also have uh, temperature color adjusters. So it can go a little blue, a little red to balance out whatever the camera is doing to our face. <clears throat> Notice that we very likely, 
need to elevate our computer. Your camera needs to be at eye level. Your computer's camera is not at eye level. I'm using a separate camera just above my computer right now. <clears throat> so if you're using the computer camera, that has to be elevated, elevated, elevated to get up in the right spot. If you'd like to sound great, you're also going to need to have a condenser mic. Now, these are not very expensive. Uh, it may seem a little over the top, but my, my mic on my computer is pretty good. Probably is pretty good. You want to roll your computer, your, your career future on pretty good? Or would you like to sound great? So this is the exact mic that I'm speaking on right now. Condenser mic um, just stands there and captures great sound, fills the rest. Now, if I were to turn the camera around and you could see what I'm seeing, this is what you'd see. Well, <clears throat> full disclosure, I've moved out of the second studio in the master bedroom and built out a full green screen studio up in a front alcove. So I'm standing in a slightly different spot, but same setup. I am facing my ironing board. It is stacked up with very hardy boxes <laughs> and my computer is up in the middle of the air. And I am surrounded by three gigantic light boxes on three sides, just like you see here. Now, <clears throat> even though my other half's eyes are not sensitive to light, mine certainly are. <laughs> I cannot imagine staring at the front window, you know, out into the brightness. Uh, I can't imagine staring at these three light boxes for an hour. And yet somehow when the camera goes on, all that concern disappears at least for the hour. So whatever discomfort you have, you need to get away from. Make sure things are at the right height. Make sure things are lit. If you need a green screen, well, this is my secondary studio in the master bedroom where I first put a green screen right on the wall. Now I'm standing in a front alcove where the entire thing is painted as a studio. It makes it much, much easier. Um, you want to look great? Yeah, you have to use a background. You have to be cut out. You have to put yourself in a place uh, that you want people to think of you about. If I want people to think of me as the right person to be on television, I think this is how they need to see me. <laughs> um, you might need to plan for the right place to put all of your stuff. Because while that picture shows an empty little stool, my stool has my coffee. Mm. Didn't get too much of it. It has my clicker. It would have anything else on it I would need all handy here. So key during an interview is not to be fumbling around, to have all of the stuff evenly around so you can seamlessly move back and forth and just be present. So <clears throat> don't forget, look in the camera. Last piece of real advice here is we get trapped in the idea of wanting to look down at the video. I need to see them. Yes, but when you go down to the video and see them, you're not looking at them. What you need to do is not see them because that's irrelevant and allow yourself to fall in love with that camera lens. Oh, that camera lens is the most best thing ever to come into my life, camera lens, and just fall in love with the camera lens. Then you're talking right to the person. As you do that more and more and get to love the bright lights, and everything else, your interviews are going to get better and better and better. This has been Interview Intervention. Thank you guys for joining in. Don't forget on Monday, very special lecture at 11 a.m. We're going to do the paradigm shift in job search, marketing yourself directly to the decision maker. On Tuesday, 11 a.m., we'll be charting your career transition. So if you are done, done, done doing what you're doing now and don't quite know how to do what you'd like to do next, that's a great lecture for that. Capping off the entire week and a half series on Wednesday with a very special Ask Self Recruiter Live Q&A. If you're not getting your job search questions answered, send them in. Send them in to ask at selfrecruiter.com. That is ask at selfrecruiter.com. This is the charting your career transition on Tuesday, 11 a.m. Hope you come to that one. Uh, wherever you are, whether that is LinkedIn or you're over on my YouTube channel or you're over on my Facebook, I hope you do like, comment, share, message, hit the bell, subscribe, all that kind of fun stuff. And join me next Wednesday also for that Ask Self Recruiter. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Have a great weekend. Take care.